coming up this week, some huge racing news from us here at GCN. Uh, we're also going to look at the incredible power outputs produced at the finale of the Zwift Virtual Tour de France, plus all your other racing related news too. However, I hope you won't mind if I start with our own news. So we've launched a brand new product called Race Pass. Now you may already have seen this on our social media channels on Friday, but I wanted to take this opportunity on the Racing News Show to tell you all about it. So Race Pass is a better way to watch live racing. Uh, it's available on our GCN app. We're going to have live, interactive and on-demand coverage, including the world's top bike races. And I guess it goes without saying really that I and everybody else here at GCN is hugely excited about this. We're all massive fans of cycling, and so to be able to bring that racing to you finally in one place feels like a monumental moment for us. Now the racing itself will start with the men's and women's Strada Bianca on August the 1st, which is less than two weeks away now. And from that point, barely a day goes past where we don't have a race. All of the classics, all the monuments, all of the Grand Tours, and pretty much everything in between. They're all in the one place and there will be no adverts either. It's just 100% racing by fans for fans. Uh, speaking of which, this is about you, racing fans. So we're going to be asking you to be involved as well with your opinions on the hot topics each day and also to vote in our polls and answer our quizzes. What we want to try and do is create the best place for everybody to watch bike racing a place where you have everything else you could possibly need too. Uh, long and short form highlights, previews, uh, maps and profiles, rider stats, start lists, results, uh, an in-depth analysis from experts and from me. Uh, on top of all of that, you'll also be able to choose your commentary language, English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Dutch or Japanese uh, with more languages to come. So if, for example, you are fluent in both English and German, and it's me commentating in English, you will be able to switch me off and put German commentary on. Happy days. Uh, and since we've been working really closely with Eurosport on this project, uh, those commentary voices will be very familiar to many of you. And if all of that wasn't enough, we've also got a brand new weekly World of Cycling show dedicated to all things racing. We've been pretty busy over the last few months. Now the first episode of that is going to go live on Wednesday, July the 29th. Now, since we launched all this on Friday, I have seen quite a few questions from people, uh, so I want to address a few of those now. First up, casting. This is a big one, I know, because you don't all want to be watching on a small mobile device. So at the moment, you are able to cast the race from your Apple or Android phone using either Chromecast or Apple AirPlay. We're currently working on a web-based version, which should be ready in August. And then Amazon, Roku and Samsung Smart TV specific versions are planned before the start of next season. And next up, what is available to you exactly? Well, race rights are both complicated and expensive. Uh, so what we have to offer will vary based on which country you're in. So we've got a calendar of races for the majority of the countries in which we are launching Race Pass. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description below this video, which takes you through to a list of those countries. So you just need to click on yours to see what's available to you. Uh, and then in terms of pricing, well, a discounted offer on the annual subscription, uh, which will be available to you through to August the 12th. And uh, just go to the Race TV tab at the bottom of the app for pricing in your particular country. Uh, alternatively, you can pay a monthly fee and then dip in and out as and when you wish. Now, I know that charging for content is not normally something we do here at GCN, but as I mentioned, race rights are really blooming expensive, so we didn't really have a choice. I am very confident, though, that it will represent good value for money for cycling fans. Anyway, if you are interested, and I sincerely hope you are, you will firstly need to download the app from your app store if you haven't done so already. Uh, just search for GCN and it should come up near or at the top of your results. Or you can find a link directly to it on your screen right now, which I guess will be much easier. Once you've downloaded the app, uh, just set up an account and then head to the Race TV tab at the bottom and you'll have the option to subscribe to Race Pass. Right, uh, I could talk about this forever because I'm so excited, visibly, uh, but I'll stop babbling on for this now. I will, though, be back later this week with a full Race Pass explainer video which will include everything you could possibly wish to know.
So let's move on to the virtual Tour de France. Uh, that event concluded at the weekend with two brand new Zwift courses. The first of those was Mont Ventoux, or at least most of it, up to Chalet Reynard. Uh, the riders climbed the steep slope to that point and it produced some pretty incredible power numbers, particularly from the men's winner, which was Mike Woods. So the EF Pro Cycling rider had been in a three-man group with Domenico Pozzavivo and Lou Menkes from NTT Pro Cycling, but despite them trying to work him over with the old 1-2 attacks, it was actually Woods who proved strongest, powering away from both of them with a couple of kilometres of the stage remaining. Anyway, here are the numbers. Woods, for the entire duration of the event, which was 47 minutes, averaged 391 watts. But then the first section of the race was relatively flat, so if you take that part out, he averaged 415 watts for 30 minutes, which is just under 6.6 .6 watts per kilo. Remarkable stuff. Uh, his peak 20 minutes was a little bit higher than that at 419 watts. Uh, 10 minutes was 429 watts, and then his best five minutes was 443. That came early on the climb. Not bad, really, for a man who broke his leg in the middle of March. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Woods' boss, Jonathan Vorters, had said that the physiological effort needed to do well on Zwift is completely different to what you need to succeed out in the real world and more akin to what you'd have to do as a runner. Now, those comments did not go down too well with stage four winner, Freddie Ovet. And he, of course, knows a thing or two about the demands of riding and running because his father, Steve, is a bit of a legend in long distance running circles. Anyway, in his post-race interview, Woods said that JV was right. I know Freddie Ovet mentioned this uh, a few uh, days ago, got a bit of a fight tip with JV over this, but my, my team boss, but uh, I actually agree with my, my team boss in this, that it is a lot more similar to, to running and uh, it's just a harder, higher sustained effort for a long period of time. And uh, I can stand basically the entire time in, uh, on, his, on his whiff profile on the, on the trainer, unlike uh, in real life where I have to sit and aerodynamics impacts you for standing up. So. If you probably saw me on the video, I was standing the entire time and able to keep the, the watts down, the power up, and just stand my way, run, run my way on the bike, basically. Interesting stuff. Uh, now, I'd not really thought about the aerodynamic disadvantages of climbing out of the saddle, but I guess I, I should have done. It would have been obvious given the speed at which the pros climb. Uh, in the equivalent women's stage, we had a two-up battle royale. Ashley Norman Pascio of the CCC team, who's been really the queen of virtual racing over the last few months, at least when it comes to climbing, uh, couldn't get shot of 19-year-old Sarah Gigante of Team Tibco Silicon Valley. We had attack after attack after attack, and also some ridiculously high power numbers. Uh, eventually, Gigante did crack, but she certainly made Norman Pascio work very hard for that one. Gigante's teammates filled the next three spots behind her, and in doing so, they'd also mathematically sewn up the overall title in quite emphatic style. That didn't stop them, though, from putting everything into the final stage, which they won. Uh, they were racing around the iconic Champs-Élysées in Paris, uh, which Wift had done an incredible job in replicating. And it was Lauren Stevens in yellow, number one on her back, who got to raise her arms aloft as the stage winner. There was a bit of a surprise in the men's event with Will Clark, who's not noted for his sprinting ability in the real world, taking the win for Trek Segafredo in front of Filippo Ganna. In finishing third, fourth, sixth and ninth though, NTT Pro Cycling had sealed the deal in the overall GC. And in fact, they won every classification, the mountains, the points, the team and the young rider to boot. Uh, now they obviously put a lot into being successful on that platform, which is in stark contrast to a few of the teams who we barely saw for the entire six stages. Now, I know that not all of you are particularly enthralled by virtual racing through the polls that we've conducted in recent months, uh, so you're going to be very pleased to know that real world racing is now just around the corner. The Sibiu Cycling Tour is due to commence on Thursday, and I say it's due to commence because unfortunately, Romania has had a sharp rise in coronavirus cases in recent days. To the extent, in fact, that Mathieu van der Poel and his Alpes in Phoenix team had decided not to take part as was originally planned. The fear being, I guess, that they might get stuck there. Now that, unfortunately, feels like the new norm, really, doesn't it? At least for the foreseeable future. Any race could be cancelled at any time. And I think we all just need to keep our fingers crossed that the majority of the UCI's revised calendar will take place as planned. 
As things stand though, the Sibiu Cycling Tour will go ahead with two World Tour teams present, Bora Hansgrohe with their sprint ace Pascal Ackerman and the Israel Startup Nation. Mitchell and Scott have revealed their aims for the Grand Tours this year, or at least for the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France. As uh, so Simon Yates will head to the Giro with the aim of winning overall. Uh, he of course has unfinished business there at that race. Whilst his twin brother Adam heads to the Tour de France, where the aim for him and for the rest of the team will be to take stage wins. Uh, they took four of those of course last year, but I was slightly surprised that he isn't going into it with at least one eye on the general classification. Uh, he finished fourth overall and the best young rider back in 2016 at that race. And if his form at the truncated UAE Tour back in February was anything to go by, he's capable of going better than that. Feels like a long time ago actually that race, doesn't it? Anyway, the team also received some fantastic news last week, and that is that they are secure for at least two more years. Now you'll remember the Manuela Fundacion fiasco from a few weeks ago, so this will have come as very welcome news for riders and staff alike. Annemiek van Fleurten would be one of those very happy with that news, but she most certainly is not happy with this year's La Course course, uh, claiming that the distance and terrain were not in line with what you would expect of a World Tour race. Uh, Chloe Hosking, meanwhile, the Australian, disagreed. She said that for many riders, this will mark their first race back, and therefore it's a good distance to begin with. Now, there was some other bad news for women's racing last week, as the Colorado Classic has been cancelled due to COVID-19 concerns. Uh, what with that, uh, the Tour of California also ending indefinitely, the women's tour here in the UK cancelled for 2020, it's really left the calendar looking rather sparse in terms of stage racing for the women's side of the sport. Uh, let's hope that the Giro Rosa is not affected in September. Stefan Kuhn has revealed that he is likely to leave the Tour de France early this year in order to rest and then concentrate on the World Time Trial Championships. Uh, they take place on the same Sunday as the last stage of the Tour. I say it that way because I still find it absolutely bizarre that there's any overlap at all because there really doesn't need to be. Anyway, it sounds like a good plan for Kung, uh, because the World Championships are, of course, in his home country this year. But it's hard to imagine that his team, Groupama FDJ, are going to let him leave early if Thibaut Pino is in the yellow jersey or, or close to it, which you'll see, I guess. Now, finally this week, uh, Naira Quintana has stated that he will return to competition at the one-day Mont Ventoux Challenge on the 6th of August. Uh, he and the rest of Colombia's cycling superstars travelled to Spain on a chartered flight yesterday. Now, Quintana has already had success on the slopes of Mont Ventoux this year, of course. Uh, he won a stage of the Tour de la Provence back in February. Now, just before I finish, uh, do make sure you keep your eye on that race pass explainer, which will be coming up later on this week. Uh, and also for a big season preview. Uh, there's a lot of racing to be packed into a three and a half month period. So Sai and I are going to be talking you through that calendar and what we expect to see. Right, that is all for now. Uh, I'm going to head off and do some revising before the racing starts again, but I will be seeing you very soon.